Hello, buddy. My name is Eric. Today, we're going to be looking at Cyber Scarecrow. Now, if you've ever watched uh, my How to Make a Stealthy VM video, you may have the idea, well, if all of these checks are meant to stop security researchers from reverse engineering malware, well, what if we reverse this on its head and simply try to defeat malware by pretending to be an analysis system? So that's exactly what these people have. It does a couple of other things that malware doesn't like, such as... Okay, I, I, I don't like this. There's a few issues I have with this before we try it out. It's not open source, which is, like, fine, you know? I mean, especially if you want to make money, I get it, but I don't like the idea of installing something this deep that isn't open source, but we're going to just do what they say because my information is public anyway, so I don't care. We're going we're gonna to get Scarecrow installed. We're currently in alpha. Okay. But why, why would you want to collect my email address? Okay, options. Okay, well, I don't care about where it's installed. Cyber Scarecrow Installer version. Now we can see what it's actually done. Uh, we can reboot the system, of course, and then we can find out how exactly this works. Now, it would be as simple, although, of course, it would give uh, researchers an edge to simply check if Cyber Scarecrow is installed and then disable all of the uh, checks. I hope malware authors do that. That would make everyone's life. That's kind of the thing I like about this is ultimately it probably won't do that much to stop malware, but it will probably do quite a bit to help malware analysts if it becomes popular. Uh, if it doesn't become popular, it may end up being very useful. So here we go, and now we've got the desktop shortcut, Scarecrow Tray, uh, and there's a million security warnings because this is an unknown publisher. There's settings, okay. Scary processes. Okay, so um, we've got fake VirtualBox service, fake VD service. We've added uh, registry keys from VirtualBox and Oracle. So VM detection is not going to be thrilled. Okay, so maybe they intend on selling it, and that's why they want to... They want to have it proprietary. Now, the obvious problem with this is there is a lot of software, which is not considered malicious, that doesn't like running in an analysis environment. The problem here is, like, for example, I can pretty much guarantee you, I obviously can't run Valorant on this VM to begin with, that you wouldn't be able to play Valorant or really any game that doesn't allow virtualized environments, which is not great. But may maybe, maybe that's okay. Maybe it isn't. Uh, so just something I'm warning about it. And now there's one thing I was sent that's open source called Exam Browser uh, that I can simply test. Someone asked me to test this on a stealthy VM. I don't recommend ever trying to run something like this in a virtualized environment because a false academic cheating allegation is something that could get you into a lot of serious trouble and negatively affect the course of your life. And it, I, whatever reason you have for it is probably not worth it. But you can do what you want. Okay, so we've got safe exam browser installing and we can see if this will run. Now, of course, it could just be blocked anyways, but someone did tell me that it does run with VMware Helm Loader. So if it fails, because the check on it is quite simple, I'm, I'm expecting it will fail because it, it's using the same string trick. Now, what I'm also going to do is borrow PyCylon's protection check, which is about the same as every other one I have seen that blocks this list of tools, uh, which would include VBox service. So it's probably going to work. That, that'd be my guess. Okay, so now let's see. Does safe verifying integrity. Nope. So you cannot use a safe exam browser probably cannot. That means if you use any proctoring software, this is going to trigger it. And there's no, there's no way around that. Uh, so now let's try, let's try this piece of uh, code. I can also run paranoid fish again to see if it's changed my paranoid fish score back. Uh, okay. Protection check. So here's the PyCylon check. It is hitting and we can actually make this a bit more verbose uh, by simply making it actually print what failed. And the process that ultimately was caught, and this also allows us to prove that it's not just because it's VMware that it's catching this. No, it's a VBox service, despite the fact this is not a VirtualBox VM. Now, one way you could identify this 
is because it's going to pretend to be multiple different things, uh, if they were to, for example, have a fake VMware tools and a fake VirtualBox tools, uh, it is impossible to have both of those going at the same time. So that would be one way of catching it. So now the next thing to do is to go to ILSpy, which is a decompiler for .NET, so that we can verify whether there's anything spooky uh, that isn't just spooky to malware. Seems like most of the code lives in this DLL, so we're just going to unpack this. Okay, Scarecrow Core. License. Okay, there's a license manager. Actually, I'm, I, I'm not going to show that because whatever's in the license manager is not, uh, you, you know, I, I don't want to be, don't want to be cracking this. Uh, auto don't registry off. Okay. What task schedule? These are all normal. So process manager. Okay. These are all exactly 14.1 megabytes. Uh, so it might be worth just checking out what these processes actually do, just to make sure that they're not hiding anything. So the fake VBox service, okay, Scarecrow process. Okay, so it does nothing, essentially, which is what I would expect it to do. So there's nothing, nothing that looks spooky in here, okay, and these are just now given everyone is getting the pro version at this point, that's fine. Bool is running. Of course, in order to make sure that there's no hidden spookiness in here, it never hurts to run network analysis just in case something may be hiding that we don't want. So I'm just going to set that up and then we're going to reboot. Now, cyberscarecrow.com is running on Vercel. So if we see any requests to either that IP range, uh, we, we know that a cyber scarecrow is uh, phoning home. So far, so good. Now, let's just check about this license. Uh, okay. Just purely because this looks like a JavaScript web token, and I am guessing that would have come from when we gave them our email. So to me, that seems pretty clear. Uh, some of the characters were OCL'd wrong, but it's pretty clear that there's no personal information in here, so that's good. So it seems to be legit. So the only way to test this out uh, is to go and find a Fortnite sin skin swapper and see uh, if it works or not. Here we go. We've got a fake Galaxy Swapper. I had to go to a different download because the first one wasn't cooperating. And uh, let's see what... Uh, I think this is the Mida Pact. Oh, some of them are. I don't know about this one. Let's see what that has to say. Only about half. Okay. Uh, we're going to allow it because I'm not sure if Defender just killed it before its own VM checks could have. But that's not a great sign. Uh, that definitely did not work. Uh, this is, I'm guessing, a Luma sample. Uh, so no, uh, it does not work against Luma Stealer. Whether that's because this isn't VM aware or not, I don't know. Uh, and it was successfully seemingly able to drop another piece of malware. Uh, although I think Defender may have blocked that. So uh, good, good work, Windows Defender. Uh, not so good work uh, uh, to Scarecrow here. Okay, so yeah, there's some dropper activity that was blocked by Defender, uh, but we already got deep enough that this is clearly not going to stop it. So we can we can try it. We can try some different ones because you can usually you can find a, a variety. But it's about the same as what someone in my Discord said that a lot of these checks they exist enough to be annoying, but they don't they don't exist enough that you could uh, reliably use them as a source of a. Okay, no, this is a this is just a random pay to cheat. Let's find a, an actual fake. I don't know why they have this horrendously bad thumbnail. Okay, so now let's see what this one does. I'm going to turn off Defender uh, before we run this one, just to make sure that that doesn't intervene. I do want to see. Now that looked more like a VMware failure. Uh, nope. Seems they're, okay, they're using a random port for TLS instead of, instead of port 80. But, yeah, nope. And that's a similar command and control server, so nope, this one worked too. Yep, and just to, just to test it again, I just ran it again just to make sure that was the source of the hit. And yep, yep, nope, it worked. So is this very effective? 
eh, one in three. It would work against Pycelon. It would not work against either of the Steelers I found in the wild. And I don't know if the Russian locale thing that they had mentioned even got implemented. But it's kind of an interesting start. Uh, of course, it, it seems to me like this is probably not worth installing because it's more likely to cause problems with anti like software that doesn't like VMs than it is to prevent malware. But maybe with enough time this can improve. It's a, definitely a very cool idea, so that's going to be all for now. Bye.